My name is Jose Barriga and uh, welcome to the next video on the conversion of an electric, of a Nissan Sentra to an electric car. Um, I have a few uh, things that I've been working on lately and I want to show you. It's been 3,000 miles that I've been driving this car now. Uh, it's been working great. Uh, the range of the batteries is starting to decrease a little bit. Now I get like 45 miles per, per, uh, of, of range per charge. I'm not sure if it's because the uh, power steering of uh, I'm using more electric things now, but uh, or maybe the batteries are getting a little low. Still good, it's plenty for me, but I think that the batteries are getting probably a little old. Anyway, uh, I've done a few things since the last video, and I want to show you. For example, the first thing I did is that I installed the fog lamps. This has nothing to do with an electric car, except that these lights are working with LED LED bulbs, so they don't use much more much uh, electricity so I replace the original bulbs with LED bulbs and they seem to work okay I cannot replace the main lights because even though they sell them they're not uh, they don't provide enough luminosity for the main driving lights they're just more appropriate for fog lamps only unfortunately maybe someday they will make better uh, LED lamps um, the uh, power steering. I did the sensors that I talked about in my last video. The sensors that will uh, automatically start the power steering pump when I turn the, the wheel. And I will show you how good this works. And I'm going to show you the the actual uh, the actual um, uh, sensors that I built. So when I turn on the uh, when I turn on the car and turn on the uh, switch in the car. The power steering pump starts, but then it stops after three seconds. And whenever I move the wheel, it automatically starts. And whenever the car is going straight again, the pump disconnects after three seconds. And that will let me save a lot of power, but still have power steering whenever I turn the wheel. So, um, I want to show you how they did this, basically. I hope there's enough light. What I did is... Um, I install magnets here, and the magnets in a in a, a washer, hose washer, are around the, um, the 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 circulating pipe. See, when I move it, it goes to this place, and it detects the proximity. So those are proximity sensors. We're just magnets around a hose clamp, and when they go around, they just uh, make contact with this uh, receptor and then it will just go into a timer this is the timer uh, let's see if you can see it better it's just a little timer that will turn on the uh, power for three seconds and that's working actually quite well <coughs> so um, it feels more like a, a regular car now uh, well I still think that I'm going to try to enclose the power steering in stereo foam because it's a little noisy, I'm going to try to reduce the noise that it makes by enclosing it in steel foam. Here's the pump, you can see it now. The pump is here. Just a little noisy. The hose comes all the way up here with the, with the reservoir. But it works pretty good actually. It, it's much easier to drive now. What else I have? Um, I, I installed an um, optic fiber here. The problem I have with these controllers is that the, the LED that is indicating the state of charge is here. And you have to I have to open the trunk to see the state of charge. So what I did is I just got a little um, fiber optic and a magnet. I put it in here and what it does is it gives me a signal here in the in the charging port. Let me open this for you. So basically I have a LED now here and I don't need to open the trunk now to see if it is charging or not, the state of charge. It's just a fiber optic that will bring the uh, signal to my uh, to the charging port. Um, what else I did? I removed the computer's power to the um, throttle because it, when, when the power steering was on and the lights were on, the controller failed to detect the, the signal of the accelerator and that's because everything was going through the computer 
her computer and I didn't really need that. This controller provides the signal for the throttle. So what I did is I really disconnected the car computer and I connected the throttle directly to this to, to the controller. Meaning I don't need the car computer anymore. There's nothing else connected to the computer anymore. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to remove it or leave it there, but it's not needed anymore. There's nothing connected to the computer of the car, the original computer anymore. Um, what else? Um, I'm still trying to determine the ground file that I have in my batteries. There's a leak to the chassis of the car. Since I removed the batteries in the top, uh, in the front of the car, and I'll get to that in a minute, the only batteries that I still have are the ba that batteries in the back. I could isolate that the ground fault is in one of these batteries somewhere, so I'm still working on that. I still want to fix it. Uh, it doesn't feel like it's in anywhere because the terminals are way, way, way well isolated. I still need to research, but it's much. It, it'll be much easier now with, with, when I remove the batteries in the front because I can see that the problem is in the batteries in the back. I still need to work on that. Um, uh, now that I removed the batteries, and I removed the batteries, I'll talk about that in a minute and I'll say why, but um, I realized that some of the batteries were leaking acid and, and this is what happened with the original supports. I need to repaint this and scratch them. Uh, this is what, what was happening. The, the, the acid caused a lot of damage into the metal, so I need to make sure that the batteries are very sealed. Um, but anyway, the reason why I really remove everything from the car is two reasons. Uh, three reasons, actually. The first one is that the squeaking noise in the clutch is getting worse. So it looks like it's time to replace the ball bearing. I got the ball bearing, which is this. I don't want to open it yet until I, I'm sure this is the, the right part. It goes here right inside of the uh, transmission in the clutch. It's making a lot more noise these days, so I need to replace it, unfortunately. Uh, so for all of you who are converting your car, when you have everything this simple, make sure to change this, this ball bearing. It's, it's, it's $40, $50, but it will save you a lot of work if you need to replace it just because it was old and it's squeaking. Um, the second reason is, I've realized that the batteries on the top, they, they need I need to tie the bolts every month or every two months because since they get hot, the bolts start getting a little loose and um, therefore they need to be tightened every month, every two months. But since my controller was here on the top of three batteries, those batteries, uh, I can really tie bolts in there. So I was a little concerned that they may be getting loose and they were a little loose, not too bad. But I decided to you know, remove them and, and use this product. This product works to tight the bolts. This will keep them in place. And I'm going to try to use also a, a, wash, a, lock, a washer lock uh, and try to keep these uh, batteries uh, maintenance free per se or remotely water the uh, system with the remoting, what remote watering system that I have so that I don't need to remove the controller to make sure that the batteries on there are fine. Um, actually, this remote system, the watering remote system that I use, it's really good. They don't, it, this, these caps do not, do not let the acid spill opposite to this. You see, even this right now is, is spilling. So I'm thinking that I'm going to use, replace this with this, uh, at least for the batteries that are here in the engine compartment, because all that acid that is dropping is causing all that damage into the metal frame. Um, Okay, so what else? That's the second reason I, 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 I remove this. But the third reason is that I, uh, it's time for me to add the air conditioning to the car. And the way I'm going to do this is by uh, adding the uh, radiator here, the fan here, and the electric compressor. Um, I thinking I'm going to put it here or here. I'm not sure yet. Uh, I need to check if I have spaces. But anyway. In any case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to install this one here. This is going to go here, right here. Okay, and the fan is going to go here. Uh, so I have the connections that I have to take care of. Uh, I'm working on that. Uh, my calculations say that everything will fit in there. Uh, I got 
an uh, electric compressor for air conditioning. This compressor came from China. There's a company com called King Leo that makes these uh, compressors. And basically, this is the main compressor. Uh, I guess I need to install it somewhere here, or I still need to find the right place. And this is the controller. Uh, this unit in particular works anywhere from 100 volts to 180 volts. And this is pretty much uh, the installation ports, the controller. Um, so, uh, we should have air conditioning soon. So, that's, uh, I'll show you the uh, system all completely installed when I'm done with this. Uh, of course, I need to get a professional installer for the connections and for the charging of the gas and the oil. Um, anyway, so those are the three main co uh, reasons that I uh, am removing parts in the car. Uh, I'll show you in the next video when I have everything uh, assembled again or more advanced. Thank you for watching.